I've heard it said that ignorance is bliss and that a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous. So what's that make the know-it-all? <laughs> we'll ponder that one. I'm John Zadar. This is the 18th of January. It is Wednesday and you're watching On Top and Hot, which reminds me, tomorrow's Thursday. That is our live streaming event. Every Thursday at four o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, we look at stocks that you want to look at. We talk to our viewers, so bring your stocks, tell us what stock you're interested in, and we'll look at the charts, the news, the share structure, whatever it is. We'll go over it and we'll let you know what we think. Four o'clock tomorrow. Be there. I'll be looking for you. Now, let's get a few things cleaned up here first before we go any further. First thing I want to tell you folks is I am not a licensed broker. I cannot give any legal financial advice. Anything I say is strictly my opinion. And in saying that, I give my opinion freely because I am not paid to talk about these stocks. I am asked this question often, and it's a fair question. A lot of your YouTubers are paid to hype up stocks. Nobody has ever paid me to talk about a stock. I do not get free shares in the company. I'm just talking to you about stocks I'm interested in, stocks investors are interested in, stocks you're interested in. So hopefully I've cleared that up. But of course, I'll come back in a couple weeks and say it again. Now on this show, we do look at OTC and penny stocks. I'm loving penny stocks more than OTC, though there are penny stocks on the OTC market, but a penny stock is any stock under five bucks, so they're everywhere. And the ones I'm referring to are on the major exchanges. Just a lot of headaches dealing with the OTC market. There are some huge gains down there, and that's why I continually trade down there. But I feel better trading the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, penny stocks, because they just have more oversight. Things are what they say they're going to be. And that goes a long ways on the market. Now, because I do a lot of research on the OTC markets, this is the site I use because it saves me a lot of frustration. It saves me a lot of time. This is the only site that I know of on the entire internet that is updated every single day for every single OTC stock by FINRA and the SEC. These are the people who give us the information we're looking for. Forget all that other stuff that people update. I want to know the share structure, the financials. I want to see their filings. I want to see the news. And it's all brought in here every single day. So if you're running around the internet doing your research, you're wasting a lot of effort. Start here. You can thank me later. Now let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. It looks a little bit stronger, but needs a refresh, I think. All right, let's give it to her. Come on, baby, show us what you got. Oh, we did get a bump. All right, mm, things are getting stronger. I mean, the first two weeks of this month, it was really, really bad. It's like nobody came back from holiday or something. Our dollar volume is, it was at 1.1 at the beginning of the year. We are at 1.9 billion right now. I want to see it get over 2.1. That is where our threshold ceiling was until it wasn't anymore. We haven't seen that ceiling in a really long time. Share volume, we're coming back up. We were literally down to 4 billion shares. We need to be over 10 billion. That's second gear for the market. So we're moving towards that direction. Trades, you know it. We've been stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades for a very long time. We have been under it. We have been over it. But by golly, we're smack dab in the middle of it right now. So there is a little more oomph to the market right now, but nothing to get real excited about. I was following trades today. We got a page over here. You come to current market and you can come down to either the losers or the gainers. And I follow this page all day. I mean, I'm back and forth on this page. And it tells you over here a little piece of information that is precious to me because I can't find it anywhere else. How many trades did the company do? I can see what their percentage gains are. I can see their volume. But how many trades tells me how many people? Now this one, you know, let's find one here. Okay, any of these. It says 15 trades. Well, that could be 15 people. 
Now that doesn't necessarily mean it was, each person could have done two trades, so there's seven people. But when you find a big number in the hundreds, which do happen, as you can see, there's not a lot of activity here. Uh, here's 65, that could be 65 people. Well, that tells me there's a crowd, at least a small crowd. Even if it's half of that number, that's a heck of a lot more than most of these companies are getting today. One, four, six, look at all of these. So I look for high traded stocks. There weren't a lot of them today. Still, I've got some good information I wanna share with you. We've got some information about the SPACs and the warrants. Hopefully you're keeping up with that because I'm gonna be talking about it a lot and some other stocks as well. Come on, let me show you what I got. First stock up for your consideration is ticker VLTA, Volta Inc. This is a penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange and they had some big news today. They got acquired. They got bought out. And wait till you see who bought them out. She finished the day at about 88 and a half cents with about 22% gains. Now, when we talk about these stocks on the major exchanges, when good news comes out, the first thing you ought to do is check to see if they have a warrant. Yeah, and that's an easy thing to do on this site, otcmarkets.com website. It'll be right over here on the right-hand side. They have a warrant, ticker VLTA, forward slash WS. It'll either have a W or a forward slash WS behind it if they have one. And the reason you want to look for them, first off, they're a lot cheaper than the stock is. And second of all, they normally run further and faster than the stock, which was the case for this one. It went over 100% today. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that Volta Inc. is an industry leading electric vehicle charging and media company. In a nutshell, they make charging units for EV cars with media advertising on it. And I don't just mean a little tiny window. I mean a big window, a huge advertisement. So even if the person charging their car walks away, anybody in the vicinity is going to see that advertisement. So it's a hot product because advertising is always a money maker. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Not bad, we jumped from 3.9 million to 37 million, almost 10 times her normal volume. Looking at our share structure for VLTA, we got 173 million outstanding, which isn't bad. And the float, I looked it up on Google, I'm not real sure exactly what it is. Two numbers kept repeating over and over, 115 million and 130 million. So it's somewhere in there. Financials for this company. Well, that's an impressive point. We had 32 million at the end of 2021. We know that's millions and not thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. When you look at their quarterly, they've got 14 million in the third quarter, 15 million in the second, 8 million in the first. That right there puts them at 38, 39 million and they've still got one more quarter to add to it when they only had 32 million at the end of the last year. So we know their revenues are growing. They're obviously doing more business and with the buyout today, I think they've already proven that they're worthy of an investment. Disclosures. We do have a couple that came out today and both of them, the 8K and this DEFA, both have to do with the deal, but the news is just easier to read than the filings. So jumping on over to that news, nothing was brought in here to the OTC. This bottom half down here is news that's online and they bring in here. It's not all about the company. Some is about the company and some is about their competitors. Other companies like them. And this right here is the news that came out today. So let's just jump on into that. And they tell us over here that Volta Inc. is to be acquired by Shell USA Inc. You know who Shell is, right? That's right, the petroleum company, to accelerate decarbonization of the transportation sector. Imagine that, a petroleum company moving into electricity. No small move. Shell to acquire Volta in an all-cash transaction valuing Volta at approximately $169 million. Probably chump change for Shell. The transaction brings Volta's powerful dual charging and media network to Shell's established brand and then seeks to unlock robust long-term growth opportunities in the electric vehicle charging sector. So of course, Shell's going to put this in all their gas stations, all their convenience stores first. Absolutely. Then we're going to see them pop up everywhere else. Now while the EV infrastructure market opportunity is potentially enormous, 
Volta's ability to capture it independently in this challenging market was pretty much nil. Chances were they were going to fumble and stumble and fall. So here comes a long shell to guarantee their success. This acquisition builds on the momentum in electric mobility by combining one of the leading EV charging and media companies in the U.S. with one of the world's largest energy suppliers. That sounds like a deal made in heaven right there. As part of the agreement, an affiliate of Shell will provide subordinate secured term loans to Volta to bridge Volta through the closing of the transactions. You know they were going to have financial backing. And finally, Volta's Class A common stock will no longer be listed on the public markets. So this ticker on the New York Stock Exchange is going to disappear. It will be gone. It's going into Shell. Now, I didn't see any numbers here, but uh, that means that your shares in this stock will be converted into shares of Shell, which currently are at $58.39, and the stock is at $0.88. Cents. So, obviously, you're going to get a lot less shares in the conversion, but they're going to be worth more, and you're in a much bigger company now who has Volta and is going to be making money with them as well. So I think it's a hot product being backed by a large company that's got all the money that Volt is going to need. How can they fail? Let's go take a look at that chart. Ooh, I'm liking this chart. This thing is in the midst of a breakout. This is sticker VLTA and her warrant. We're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. Think or Swim? These are my viewers. If you like Think or Swim, go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, and they'll give this to you to use absolutely free. And all you got to do is keep your account open to use it. That's it. So let's take a look at the common stock first, VLTA six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here in mid August of $3.06. She started struggling with the 200 and once she cracked that 200 and fell, she fell perpetually until she had a low bubble here at the end of December at 30 cents. And that is a 52 week low. Now I always say, if you see a stock that has value and this stock has value, the revenues are increasing, they got a hot product. You see a stock that has value hit a low bubble, that is a flashing for sale sign. That will call in investors and buyers. And she has been climbing ever since then. The volume has slowly been increasing until today's news when it exploded. Everything is on a nice climb right here, sitting on top of her nine day SMA, nice and easy. And you can see our technicals from that low bubble have been growing as well. Every single one of them is on a strong, smooth incline and still hot. 20 day, one hour view. As I said, she bounced off of that low bubble and just started to climb. And she's going through each one of these SMAs without any excitement. Normally when I see it cross a 50 day SMA, you get a big bar. Big price bar, that is. Cross the 200 big bars, but I'm not seeing that. They're a little bigger here, but not as big as I'd expect. I see the price has been respecting the 50-day SMA. That's the yellow one here. She bounced on it, bounced on it, and then look. She graduated. The price got lighter. It actually jumped up here to the orange 20-day SMA. Bounced off of it a couple times and then launched and put herself on top of the nine. This is a good sign. It's moving from each SMA up to the lightest SMA. It's becoming helium. And then it shot way up here, way above the nine day SMA. Now, when you see the price get really far away from the nine day SMA, you have to expect it's going to come back. Everything is on a rubber band. It stretches and then it pulls back, including the SMAs. When that nine day SMA gets just too far away from the 20 day SMA, you've got to expect the price is going to come back down. And that's what happened. She got way up here and then pulled back. And look, she's put herself right back into place on the nine day SMA. And our technicals are still pushing up and strong. Now, there is a little bit of pullback right now. I can see all of our technicals are cooling off at this very moment. That aftermarket activity is what done it. Let's look at that aftermarket activity. So she's been climbing these last five days on that 200 day SMA. She cracked it here with this bad fall, the biggest fall she had, put herself back up on it and you can see she's bouncing right on it, not even coming underneath. And then she launched today, hit her high of 94 cents, 
pre-market and then fell back and hung in this mid 80 zone all day and right now she is uh is it on the 50 or under it it looks like it's on the 50 yes right on top of the 50 not bad placement at all she does look like she's cooling down and i'll tell you what folks honestly i think she's probably gonna fall back down to this 200 we just got done seeing she bounced off that 200 perfectly and now she stretched too far away from it and rather than fall right back to it she's biding time she's being patient waiting for the 200 to come to her now it may continue going sideways or it may fall but in either case I would wait for the price to get on or near that 200 before you decide to make an entry and then watch and see if she doesn't continue on all right let's take a look at that warrant now for our six month view yes sir so we were at 77 cents in the middle of september when she started her fall hit her low here in mid december of five and a half cents pretty much went sideways for quite a while until about the same period of time the 6th the 5th of january she started to grow now she was at about seven and a half cents and hit a high here of 25 cents so you're looking at a strong 300 percent gain since the sixth just today she jumped from about 10 cents to 25 about 150 percent gains today which i consider a small jump on a warrant i actually do consider anything near 100 150 to be a small jump so if you like small jumps there was one for you. Didn't have any volume until today. Lots of volume came in. And all the technicals got hot, still strong, but we have had a pullback on our price at the end of the day. 20-day, one-hour view. Not much going on until she started climbing here on the 5th. Got up over that 200. There's that big bar of excitement I look for. And it got too far up, way above the nine day, so it came crashing down, but went underneath the nine, kind of like a rubber ball coming into water. It goes underwater, bloop, and then comes up on the top and floats. That's what it did. Came underneath and then jumped back up. And look, ta-da, we're right there up at our nine day SMA again. Technicals, they were strong, but they've pretty much pulled back because of all this action. Ooh, look at that. We just got a green bar. <laughs> Put herself right back on top of that nine-day SMA. I'm liking what I'm seeing live here, folks. Five-day, five-minute. So she did have a jump back here on the 10th. She went from 10 cents up to 17 cents at 70% gains. Came down broke her 50-day SMA, and then launched back over it. And look how big the bars got. That was your signal something was going to happen, that big bar, after being underneath the 50, getting on top. Jumped up to her high, settled down here, and has been going sideways for the rest of the day. And the 200 down here has just come into the picture. You can see there's nothing here before it, right? Now, I notice in many cases, when a new SMA comes onto the board, the price gravitates to it. Whether the price is above it or below it, it just wants to go to it like tag team wrestling match. You're tagged. Now, it doesn't have to stay there, but it does want to touch it. So I'd be leery of that. I'd watch for that, which could mean this could fall from 20 cents down to 13 cents. It's possible. So I like this company. They got a hot product. They're being swallowed up by Shell, which has got a lot of money. It's a well-known brand name. Product is probably going to be putting all their gas stations and convenience stores right from the get-go. Now, the one thing you want to remember if you're playing the warrant, the warrant is probably going to disappear just like the stock. It's being swallowed up by Shell, and I think Shell has their own warrant. They're not going to need these. So don't be thinking about hanging on to this warrant. Get into it for a quick day trade. Take your gains, get out, and be thankful. You're wondering, what are we doing over here at your Twitter account, John? Well, to be honest, it's just going to make doing the research on what I want to talk about easy. I post a lot of information here at Twitter and on my Discord group. The difference is Discord, my Penny Boys group, they give me a page that's dedicated just for me. It's called Jersey's News. And I post all these SPACs and their warrants and everything that's going on with them. Mergers, bankruptcies, acquisitions, all the hot news I put in there. And there's nothing else in there to clutter it up. So if you really like my news, join our Discord group. It's just one of the benefits you can get over there. And it's absolutely free.
Now, the reason I brought you over here is because I was looking at warrants today on SPACs, as I always do, and I found some hot SPACs. Now, real quickly, folks, a SPAC is a blank check company that comes onto the market with no business or operations of their own. They get up onto the market and then they go looking for a deal, a merger, an acquisition. And when they come out with news, believe it or not, the stock itself, which is normally $10 a share in a SPAC, can't move. I mean, you could bid on it, but most people don't because there's a value lock on it of $10 until they close and consummate a deal. So by default, the warrants get all the attention and on very little volume, they run much further and much faster than the stock does by a long shot. And I found a few today that had little catalysts. Now, what do I mean by little catalysts? Well, most of the catalysts with the SPAC is a merger deal. It's an acquisition. They're getting this company or that company, and that's big news. A little catalyst? Well, these SPACs have 18 to 24 months to do that. If they don't find a deal in 18 to 24 months, they're out of business. They have to close their doors and liquidate and actually return all the investment monies back to their investors. And nobody wants that. If I invest into a SPAC a year ago and I'm waiting and waiting for them to consummate a deal, the last thing I want to hear is I'm going to get my money back. I don't want my money back. I didn't want it tied up for a year, year and a half waiting just to get nothing. So these little catalysts are extensions. Just before they run out of time, the company can file for an extension. It costs them money, but they can get more time, a month, three months, even six months. Well, when the clock is running out and the investors see that, they've lost hope. When they hear of just a vote, to approve an extension. There is hope. And when that extension is approved, now they've got belief. And that's when these warrants are running on hope and belief. And then comes a piece of news that they're going to consummate a deal. They're talking about a letter of intent with this company or that company. Boom, there's another run, a huge run. Let me show you how big these can be. This is the sort of news I'm writing about. Ross, it's a SPAC. This is the name of the company. They are merging with Aprenioa Therapeutics, a clinical stage biotech company developing novel therapeutics and precision diagnostics for treatments of new generative diseases expected to close the first half of 2023. Warrant watch. Keep your eye on this warrant. We don't know when these warrants are going to run. When this news comes out, it's normally soon. Could be today, could be tomorrow. But you got to remember, these pieces of news the letters of intent, talking about a deal, an extension. That's the first step on the whole stairwell. They're going to the top. They intend to get to the top. So we are here at the beginning. So even if it doesn't pop now, chances are it's going to pop real soon. Then I got one here for you folks. Oh, there you go. FTEV, FinTech Evolution Acquisition Group. It is a SPAC. Warrants were removed from the New York Stock Exchange. I don't know why. Though this was scheduled for January 23rd, it happened today. Well, look what happened, folks. It jumped. I don't understand it either, but warrants get a lot of attention. This jumped 3,233% and it is now on the OTC. Now, you don't normally see warrants on the OTC. It's not something that you're going to find, but there are more than one of them. I found another one. Let's back up so I can show you. This one uh, here, CPTK SPAC, Crown PropTech Acquisitions, files for a meeting to extend the deadline to consummate a deal. The warrant zooms from triple zero one to 10 cents. Folks, that's a hundred thousand percent gains. No, it's not an accident. You don't do splits on warrants, so it wasn't a split. It's not made up. I checked it, it's real. The thing ran 100,000%. If you had had $100 in this, when it was just the other day at, I think, triple zero one, triple zero one, you would have made $100,000 off of your $100 bill. Got another one here for you. This is from today. All of these are FSNB. It's a SPAC, Fusion Acquisition Corps, to vote in February for a deadline extension from March 2nd to September 2nd. So their deadline is March 2nd. That's not as close as one at the end of the month, right? We've got months before we get there and still the warrant ran. Look what the warrant did. 
1,150% gains. Look at the price, a penny. Folks, you don't have to throw a lot of money at these. Now, yes, you can make a killing off of them with big investments, but why take the risk? Now, there's less risk involved in these. Let, let me tell you how much less risk. Let's say we have 10 pieces of news for penny stock companies. They're all doing business. Then we got 10 pieces of news on SPACs. The 10 pieces of news on regular companies, maybe three, maybe four will have a good response on the charts. The rest, what the heck? What happened? With SPACs, 10 pieces of news, you're going to see six of them respond. The odds are better. That's 100% odds increase. So not only are we getting bigger gains on warrants, we've got better odds that the news is going to make them move. So we had three stocks right there that took huge gains. Now let me show you what this looks like over on the charts and share a little more information with you about these warrants. So we've jumped back on over here to Thinkorswim where I've got one of my favorite scans up and my warrant watch list that I keep updating right now. So this is one of my favorite scans, double zero one to $3. It is perfect to find hot penny stocks as well as hot warrants. And normally the hottest warrants are at the top, right? Because I do put it in percentage gains at the top. And I just don't look at the top because that's where they've already run right? I do go all the way down to like 25% and see what's going on. Now looking for hot penny stocks, I'll look at my volume over here and see which ones I can actually see moving. Do, 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 do. It's just ticking away. Okay. That's a hot one. People are paying attention to it, but with warrants, you're not going to see the volume move, but not every W and WS on the end of these tickers, which is what I look for is going to be a SPAC. There's a lot of companies that have warrants. So you're looking for names like uh, Talon One Acquisition or Purdue Acquisition, Yoda Acquisition. You see a theme going on here? So that's an easy way to find a SPAC without even having to do any research. And then I will do research. I'll click it, go find the news, find the filing. A lot of times the news isn't in a news press. It's in an 8K or an S1, something like that, a meeting. You're going to find that in a filing. So I find that news. And if it was a piece of news that looks like they've taken their first step up the stairwell, I'm putting that ticker over here. And this is the accumulated list I've got. And today, was a hot day for warrants. Yesterday, not so hot. Today was excruciatingly painful hot if you weren't in and you missed them. CPTK here, I'm gonna pull up the charts, but we're really not looking at the charts. I'm just gonna let you see them. Uh, let me see, I'll pull this back to uh, 20 days. Uh, all right, one hour. So CPTK here, would you believe it had 69,000% gains? That's what they say from triple zero one up to 10. I don't know how it breaks down, but I was looking at all these and they are legitimate jumps. FTEV, I showed you over at Twitter. She was down here at triple zero three. Uh, up over a penny here says she got 3,500% gains today. That's 35 times where she was at. FSNB, 2,400% gains. Was up, came down, went right back up, and even higher. Technicals are real strong, but folks, reading the technicals, reading the charts and warrants is very, very difficult because everything is froze. Nothing's moving so that you can see where it's going. It's just locked. And the next time you see volume, it will be a bounce. It will be a move. So really what's most important here is keeping up with the news. The news is vital. Keep it on top of it as fast as you can. You know what I do? If you're reading the charts, if you're reading the scans, you're probably a half a step behind it because by the time you see it, well, it's happened, right? So you go to the news, especially after market, because whatever you find that happens after the market closes will be responded to the next day. And I put in the word SPAC merger, SPAC acquisition, a company merger, something like that. And of course I go to news, and I set my filter on one day or one week. I don't want to search through everything. I just want to see what's out there right now. And I find anything that is voting on an extension, had an extension approved, is talking about a merger, any of those, 
That's going to be a hot one. It may not bounce today. Don't be bummed. It may not bounce tomorrow. Don't be bummed. It is just the progression and you're there at the right time. And these are the sort of gains you can expect. Ross, Ross had news today. Can't remember what it was. She got 216% gains, but that was where she fell to. She started here at seven cents and went to 30 cents. That's 400 and some odd percent gains. Now you do notice a lot of these runs are pre-market. Yes, that's where a lot of the gains on warrants happen is in pre-market. And you and I can trade pre-market. Absolutely. You don't need any special permissions. You don't need to take classes and get qualified. No, get in there and trade. It's not a whole lot different than the regular hours. The only difference here is, is that when you place your order, you got to change your day order to an extended market order or it'll be ignored. So put in day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. If not, it just won't work. And if you don't take it off, it'll go when the bell goes off. So be careful about that. Uh, and then here's a warrant BNIXW. This is from a couple days I added it on here. She had a little bounce. She hit a low bubble here had a bounce off of that and she got herself 125% gains, but you can see she was a lot higher here at five cents. So we could expect another bounce to at least that, which would be another 100%. And who knows beyond that? So this is my watch list. Hopefully you can see it. I wish I could share it. Actually, I tried to share it. I did. They've got a share button here and I tried to share it and it just wasn't working, doggone it. But in either case, this is what I'm watching and every day I'm adding more. So you can go through Twitter and find all my warrant watches, grab those warrants, throw them into your watch list or better yet, come on over to Discord. You don't have to sort through anything. It's all on one page, nice and easy. So you're gonna hear me talking about warrants with SPACs a lot. I'm going to dog it, folks, because this is where money is being made. This is where I'm focusing my attention now. As I said, good news is being wasted on penny stocks. But good news, even the slightest good news with these SPACs, are causing some huge gains. Even a small bump of 150% is a nice gain. Wouldn't you say so? How are you doing? You okay? You look a bit queasy there. Did I shock you with those gains from the warrants? I know, they're incredible. 3,600% gains, tens of thousands of percent gains. Can you imagine? I mean, for every $100 bill, 10,000% gainer gives you $10,000. I mean, you could literally just invest your cigarette money, $10, and turn that into $1,000 on a 10,000% gainer. Why can't we get our everyday average normal company stocks to run like that? Oh, some do. This one here today. Let me blow your mind once again. This is ticker CBDW, ticker 1606 core. She finished the day at 85 cents with 2,700% gains. Oh, and she's on the pink tier. <laughs> now, that is meager, folks. 2,700% gains. You know what I'm thinking? It's time to get in. And you're going, are you nuts? After a run like that, you think we should get in? And what do you mean that's meager? I'm all confused. I'll tell you what I mean. She was at a high today of 44,900%. Yes, 44,000% gains on this stock. She came on the market yesterday. Here's what happened. CBDW is a spin out from Singh ticker S-I-N-G. We were told about this way back in January of 2021, back when they were talking to us about a reverse split, a one in 75. Well, these things transpired in time, but when CBDW got spun out, it didn't appear on the market immediately and it wasn't seen for a while. People got upset and we just kind of forgot about it. Kind of like HNRC dividend, right? It's going to be there. It's just hard to believe when you don't see it. Well, yesterday, out of the clear blue, without any forewarning notice or press release, boom, CBDW is on the market as of yesterday, the 17th. And she came on the market, surprisingly, at one penny. And she hit a high of $4.49. Folks, that is 44,000. 900% gains in one day. And now she's fallen back from 44,000% down to 
down to 2,700%. Is this a bounce? But look at this. Relative volume, there's no volume yesterday. Today was the first day I took off trading. 129,000 shares. I don't know what to think. Did a few people see the new company on the market and say, well, you don't spin out a company with no assets. They must have assets and they gotta be worth more than a penny. So let's say $5. I don't know. How did it get that high so quick with so little volume? And nobody knows. It caught everybody by surprise today. We all saw it running. Nobody really got in. I haven't met anybody who got in on this, but I'm curious to see what's going to happen with it. When you go through to get more information, like the share structure, there's nothing here yet. There is no news for the company. Uh, financials, obviously there's no financials. So there's nothing here. All we have is this and the chart. And they didn't even tell us why they're here. There's not even a piece of news here saying, yeah, we're on the market now. We are the spin out from saying, hello, do you remember me? No. So there's no volume. So what's going to happen when people figure it out? There were a lot of people waiting for this spin out. I don't know. There could be a surprise surge tomorrow. If only 129,000 shares did this. Now, of course, I'm not expecting thousands because we're at 85 cents now, right? So how high is it going to go? Could we get 100% out of it? Could we get 200? To be honest, I haven't done a deep dive. I don't know what CBDW does. I don't know what they do. I don't know what their assets are. I didn't dive into the filings. All I saw was the price and the reason why she ran. Let's go take a look at that chart. Well, as you would have expected, CBDW doesn't have a lot of chart. It's only been on the market for two days. But verification, this is the 17th yesterday. There's our low bubble of a penny. She wrote out a penny. Looks like she hit a penny and a half at the end of the day. Opened up today down there and jumped to 20 cents in the first five minutes. We're on a five minute, five day chart. So in the first five minutes from open, she went up 2000% in five minutes. She then jumped up to 34 cents, uh, tagged 44 cents, and that was her ceiling. You can see right there, she got stuck, bang, 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 and just wouldn't go any further. And then somebody came in with some volume and excited everything, and poof, she took off here from about 50 cents up to $4.50. Came down and look, look, there's that support line. It was a resistance under here. It's banging its head. And now it's a support holding it up and supporting it. So it bounced right off of that. And we have closed here at about 85 cents. But it looks like <laughs> it, it's gone up to a dollar after market hours. So it's starting to bounce already. Um, technicals, uh, God, everything has gone flat. The only thing I see is our RSI is starting to turn up. I think it's one to watch, folks. It's a wild card. There's no doubt about it. Obviously, you're not going to get these 20,000% gains now that she's at 85 cents. But you could get yourself 50, 100. Look, if it goes from where it's at now back to that high, that right there is what? 350% gains just getting up to that high. So anywhere from here to there, which seems likely would be a good gain. So I would put CBDW on my watch list for tomorrow. This thing's weird. Nobody's seen it yet. Volume's too bloody low. If they put out a news press, wouldn't you like to be holding this before it took off? Now again, some more due diligence, folks. I have no clue what the company does. I don't know what their business is supposed to be. If they're in business, I don't know if they have assets. I would presume they do if they were spun out. Why spin it out if they don't have assets? So check into it. You might find out more than I even know. If you do, put it down in the comments. Please share your comments with me. I read them and answer them all, folks. Honestly, I appreciate it. So the two stocks we looked at, 1606 and Volta, these are quick plays. Uh, 1606 is going to be a wild card. Don't know what's going on with it, but it's going to be a short window for the wild stuff to happen. 
Watch for that tomorrow. And Volta, well, it's being swallowed up by Shell. I don't know how much longer she's going to be on the market. I could not find any dates there. So if you're going to play the warrant or the stock, get out. Don't stay in for longer than a day trade. That's my advice, just my opinion. And those warrants, folks, I'm telling you, the warrants are making the big money every single day on little tiny catalysts that are just at the beginning of the progression. So if you miss the first bounce and it comes down and you say, oh, look how cheap it is. That's right, look how cheap it is. You saw the excitement, the first bounce. It came back down, get yourself an entry down there. You don't have to get everything you want. If it comes down lower, you're going to be able to buy more because you didn't get everything you wanted. You'll get a better price. And then when it happens imminently, it's bound to happen if they have good news. Another piece comes out and everyone's reminded about it again. And phew, you're in the seat this time, buckled in. And you can catch that one. Get out. Wait for it to fall. Get in again until they complete the deal and the stock goes live. Then the warrant's not going to get as much attention because, well, the investors are splitting between the stock and the warrant. But right now, only those warrants get all that attention. Hope you enjoy what I'm sharing with you, folks. I want to make you some money. Remember, the more DD you do, the more you're going to know. Wow, I got that wrong this time. Let's try that again. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. I got it right that time.